Hallelujah, Lord, we're singing hallelujah. I've been running ever since I made a star. Don't you know that my days are brighter? God's going to make my burdens lighter. I know that his love is a bubbling oh, down in my heart. If you believe, then sing hallelujah. Sing glory, hallelujah. Oh, you know I've been running ever since I made a star. Thank God that my days are. King Jesus gonna make my burdens lighter. I know that his love is a bubbling over. I know that his love is a bubble. Deep down, I know that his love is a bubbling over. Down in my heart, down in. Just worship and sing hallelujah. Give him the highest praise, hallelujah. Oh, you know I've been running ever since I made a star. God keep, keeps on blessing me in my days. I brought King Jesus gonna make my burdens lighter. I know that his love is a bubbling over. Know that his love is above. If you believe the sing, his love is a bubbling over. Down in my heart. Sing it one more time. Give him the highest praise. Ha. Give him the highest praise. Sing hallelujah. Oh, stay right there, sing hallelujah. He brought us here today, sing hallelujah. Oh, you know I've been running every since I made a star. He keeps on making my days brighter. God's gonna make my burdens light. If you believe the sing, his love is a bubbling. No, we know that his love is a bubble. We believe that his love is a bubbling over in my heart, down in my heart. Show me the way, oh Lord, show, show me, show me the way, because I'm down here, Lord, and I need your Word, please, Lord, show, show me, show me the way. Mm, when I feel alone, sometimes, Lord, just show, show me, show me the way. When things are rough down here, Lord, just show, show me. Show me the way because I'm down, down here, Lord, and I need, I need your power. Oh, Lord, show, show me, show me the way. child, Lord, I am, I, I am your child. Oh, Lord, help me to understand some things, Lord, because I am, I, I am your child. Oh, I am down, down here, Lord. Power, please 
peace, Lord, just show, show me, show me the way. We sing that again. Sing, Lord, I'm your child, Lord, I am. I'll forever be your child. Mm, I'm asking you, cousin Lord, I am. Sing, I am your child. Because, Lord, I'm down. I need you, cause I'm down here, Lord, and I need, I need your power. Please, Lord, just show, show me, show me the way. Oh, show me the way, Lord, just show, show me, show me the way. Some things I may not understand, Lord, but I'm asking you to show, show me, show me the way. I know you have the answer, Lord, because I'm down here down here, Lord, and I need your power. Please, Lord, just show, show me. I'm asking, Lord, show me, show me, show me. I'm down here, I'm down here, I'm down, down here, Lord, your child needs we need your power. Please, Lord, just show. I'm asking you to just show me the way. I'm down here, I'm down here, I'm down here, I'm down. Down here, Lord, and I need, I need your power. Please, Lord, just show, show me. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for joining us in Bible study on Tuesday evening. And, uh, we're grateful that you took time out to join us. As always, call somebody, text somebody, share somebody uh, on your Facebook page. Please share this. Uh, all your friends need to be in Bible study on Tuesday evening. And so uh, it, it is your opportunity to be an evangelist and, uh, and evangelize your Facebook community and share this with them. Um, share, uh, let them tell them to go to YouTube, tell them to go to our website, CarmackChurch.org. Any way that you want to connect them, uh, by all means, definitely do that. You can even tell them to get on the conference call because we got a couple of people in the conference call tonight. And so uh, so we can do that as well. Listen, we are back in Nelson Studios. You see it. You see where we're at. Uh, we have came back to Nelson Studios. And so we are not at Carback on tonight. And so, uh, so we're back at our comfort zone, our comfort level. Everything is easily connected, easily connected. Uh, made available. And so we're excited about that. I even got a, uh, a live studio audience with me tonight. And so I'm grateful uh, that A. Nelson is here with us. And, uh, and of course, our super producer. Yeah, let's give him a hand, y'all. Aiden Nelson is in, is here with us. And so, uh, and uh, my super producer is here with us as well. So uh, we are missing one, uh, but she We'll be back, uh, Lord's willing, on Saturday. She'll be flying back in town Saturday. And uh, she said, Daddy, I cannot believe that you didn't remind everybody on Sunday that I'll be back. <laughs> I said, uh, oh, number one, I'm grateful that you were to worship because uh, that's the only way you would have known that. And uh, two, uh, we are looking forward to you coming back. She's been gone a month now. And so we're looking forward to seeing her beautiful face very soon. Listen, I want to say thank you first to everyone who support our back to school giveaway. I cannot say that enough. It was a tremendous success. Thousands of families were blessed because of you and your generosity, your support, and your help. 
2002 backpacks filled with supplies were given out on uh, this past Saturday, and another 500 backpacks will be delivered to area schools. So as kids come to school, they don't have the necessary tools they need, they will have it available because of you. And so we're grateful uh, for that opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus and bless our community. And so 2002, we're giving out 500 will be given to area schools. And so uh, we're excited about what God is doing. I mentioned on Sunday that we are on break from classes for the month of August. And uh, I just want to reiterate that that means that Sunday school, Monday men's class, M Monday women's class, Tuesday online class where we are now, Wednesday midday, and Wednesday kids classes will all be on break. Uh, but we will continue our first Sunday prayer service and our Friday prayer call. So those will continue, but all the classes, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, will be on break for the month of August. Here's what's important to note. There's two important benefits that we get from that break. Number one, it gives those that have been working hard all summer long a much needed break. Uh, we have volunteers for our summer camp that we ran for a week, our golf tournament. We raised money for scholarships, our VBS in the community, which happened every week in the month of July at different places around the city. Uh, we've done the drive-in movie, which Aiden came down to make sure that that happened. Uh, we did the back school giveaway, all while doing all those classes I just mentioned. And some people have showed up at everything. Everything that we've offered, uh, they have been there. And so we appreciate them. So one, it gives a much needed break. But two, it gives us time to prepare for the relaunch of our class in September. We are in the midst of organizing a bus ministry. And we are trying to have two different routes, one in Mount Pleasant and one in Columbia. That is our aim and that is our goal, to have two bus routes on every Sunday and on every Wednesday in order to bring kids to class. Uh, we are renovating our downstairs classroom space. So we're taking all the stuff on the wall that's outdated, got new furniture that has been donated to us, and we'll be getting uh, screens and computers and different things like that in order to uh, update the downstairs space. And then we're preparing to offer new classes. So Wednesday is has been just for the kids, but we're shifting our midday class to evening. So, so everybody from adults down to the kids will have time uh, to study the God's word on Wednesday evenings. And so uh, we're doing that. And of course, Sunday school is going to be for all ages. We are going to be intentionally busting kids in, so we know we have the kids there, and uh, we have teachers in each one of those different age groups. It is an arduous task. It's a big deal, uh, something that we've, we've not done in, in years, uh, running a bus ministry. Actually, on Sunday, it's hardly ever been done, actually bringing kids uh, to, uh, to school, to the Sunday school. And so number one, I need you to be praying for us. And, and I also need you to be patient with us as we try to regroup. It's hard to retool and get everything together while you're in the midst of, uh, of preparing every single week. I won't even get into all that I do because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part of all that stuff, but I've got two radio programs that I do, uh, on, on every single Sunday in the midst of all the other preparations that I make and things that I do throughout the week. And so uh, I'm not tired at all. I'm ready to run and I'm, I appreciate uh, God giving me these opportunities, but it is easier to make these adjustments and changes when, when you don't have so much pressing, especially when you talk about big changes. So we've got some big things in the works, uh, got some big things planned, but here's what's even more amazing is that uh, we are considering uh, possibly doing a best of. I know how, how it happens that when uh, we're not in this space, you find something else to take your time. And so I don't want to lose uh, the hundreds of people that join us on Bible study. Uh, I don't want to lose all those who view and those who share and those who view later. So we're trying to, um, especially for our online audience, trying to do something maybe uh, for you all. So uh, pray with us for us. 
that uh, that God just Lord out of everything we do. One last announcement: we're going to jump jump into John chapter twelve. Uh, so if you turn your Bibles to John chapter twelve, if you open up your app uh, Bible app to John chapter twelve, I'd appreciate. It. I just something my eye here. Uh, I apologize. Uh, the uh, this Sunday is fifth Sunday, which means all the offering goes towards the expansion building fund which helps us to complete the building renovations and break ground with new multi-purpose space. So keep that in mind as you're giving on this coming Sunday uh, that, that your normal offering and the over and above offering, it all goes towards uh, that effort. And so prepare yourself now for your giving. And so on this Sunday, uh, we will be, uh, we'll be giving and we'll be uh, sharing and we will all together uh, see God show up in an amazing way. So I'm looking forward to that fifth Sunday, uh, our giving. And 100 percent that goes towards those efforts. Uh, so make preparations to give generously right now. Let's dive into John chapter 12. John chapter 12. On tonight, Jesus follows up and answers the question, who is this son of man? That's what we stopped on last week. That was the question asked, who is this son of man? And he really wants you all, the, those in the audience to understand the light, the light is not always going to walk among them. The light is not going to walk, always walk among them. That's how he asked the question from, from, uh, from previous, who is the son of man? He follows up in the next verse and says, this light is not going to always walk among you. Here it is, John 12, verse number 36. If you would turn there, open up your Bibles there. If you would uh, read along with me, the Bible says, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Here's the lesson topic for this evening. Walk in the light. Walk in, in the light. It's an interesting thing about light, that light allows you to see the pitfalls ahead of you. If you're driving down a dark road, that if there is a street light, you see that there's a pothole right there in front of you. That light allows you to recognize that there's an enemy that's waiting to attack you. The interesting thing about going from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, you all know about the story about the Good Samaritan and uh, the one who would help that man who was injured by the side of the road is that oftentimes it was a, uh, a space where people could hide and they could not see the enemy attack. People would actually act as if they were hurt in order for people to stop by, then ambush them. But here's the amazing thing about light is that if you have light, if you can see clearly, you can see the enemy waiting to attack you. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but you also, light allows you to see that help is on the way. Help is on the way. That when I see light, I know this, that over the horizon, the help is on the way. That I don't have to worry, I don't have to be concerned then only can I see the enemy, but also see that help is on the way. The encouragement from Jesus is for us to walk in the light so that we can become sons of the light. Sons of the light, here's, here's by definition what sons of the light means is that sons of the light says that we look like Jesus, that we act like Jesus. We imitate the behavior of the father. That is amazing. As my son grows up, I see much of me in him. I, I see my physique. I see uh, my, my, the shape of my head. I see different things in him because I am his father. And he says, Jesus says, I want you to walk in the light so you become sons of the light, that you imitate me, that you look like me, that you behave like me. So here's what's amazing about walking in the light, that walking takes longer than running. Walking takes longer than running. What else about walking? Walking allows you to take in your surroundings. You don't rush through when you walk so you can see what's around you. Walking builds endurance for the travel ahead. So walking takes longer than running. Walking allows you to take in the surroundings. Walking builds endurance for the travel ahead. In order to be a son or daughter of the light, you, you, you're going to have to have intimate time with the father. So you got to spend time. You can't rush through this thing. Can't rush the relationship that if I'm going to be a son of the light, a daughter of the light, I have to spend intimate time with the father. You got to stay in your word. 
You got to pray often. You got to spend intimate time if you're going to be a son or daughter of the light. Listen, also, that, that in order to become a son of the light, you got to recognize what God is doing in you, what God is doing around you, and what he's doing through you. Hope y'all got that. Hope somebody's taking notes on this evening that if I am going to be a son of the light, I got to recognize what God is doing in me, what he's doing around me, and what he's doing through me. I got to recognize my surroundings if I'm going to be a son of the light. Here's the last thing. If you're going to become a daughter of the light, you got to be willing to stay committed, weather the storm, and endure the challenges ahead, but never stop walking in the light. It's not always going to be easy. Not always going to be simple, but you have to maintain and continue to walk in the light. But what the text says, the text says, there are some that no matter what Jesus did, they refuse to believe in him. It's right there in the text, y'all. It's in verse number 37, John 12, verse 37. And then I'm going to skip down and look at verse 39 and 40. The Bible says in 37, but although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. That's verse number 37. Drop down 39 with me. Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Here's the first point I want to suggest to you that you cannot see what you refuse. You cannot see what you refuse. Let me make it make sense. The signs that is mentioned in verse 37, the signs of healing, that Jesus healed people. He provided food. He provided comfort for people. He led groups of people. That wherever he, he, he was, throngs of people followed him. He was leading them. He's providing for them. Two fish, five loaves of bread. He fed thousands of people with a small lunch because he's providing for them. He healed people. There was a man who lay lame at the pool of Bethesda. He healed him and made him better. So all are these are all signs that Jesus is who he says he is. They are proof of him being the son of God and operating as God of all the earth. That is signs. Those are signs. But if you already have your mind made up, you refuse what's standing right in front of you. That Jesus is trying to show you that he loves you. He's trying to show you that he cares for you. He's giving you chance after chance after chance. He's not giving you what, the, what you deserve, but he's extending mercy. But be, if you don't recognize it, if you don't accept him, you continue to refuse what's standing right there in front of you. He's asking you to be a son and daughter of the light, but you continue just to do what you want to do and understand that he can be right there. He's right there for you to embrace but if you, if you continue to refuse him, you can't see him. Here's what's amazing about prophecy. Because verse 39 and 40 is a prophecy shared by Isaiah, but reiterated, reiterated here by John. Prophecy is proven. Prophecy is proven by being played out in present day scripture or present day time. So here it is. The validation of the prophecy being true is God giving word to the prophet. God gives a word to the prophet. The prophet declares that truth and the truth did is witness in the lives of those of which the prophecy was spoken. Mm -hmm. So prophecy, God gives a word to the prophet. The prophet then declares that truth to the people and then the truth is witnessed in the lives of those of which the prophecy was spoken. That is true, authentic, and real prophecy. Isaiah shares the prophecy. John is reminding us of what Isaiah shared and says now, you got to see it, y'all. Their eyes are going to be blinded. Their hearts are hardened. And the only way they can be healed is through opening their eyes and understanding with their hearts. That's the prophecy. Their eyes are going to be blind. Their hearts are are going to uh, not understand the only way they got to open their eyes, they got to understand with their hearts, and then they can be healed. Here, here it is, y'all. I've shared with you the blessing 
of seeing the connection of scripture when you're doing a book study. The blessing of us doing this book study is that we now see the symmetry and connection of scripture and how God is bringing this all together. So watch the text one more time. This is going to blow your mind. Watch the text. Jesus is teaching in verse 35 that the light is not going to be with you always. So while you have the light, walk in the light. That's what he says. What he's trying to make connection to for his audience, that he is the light. That's what he's trying to make connection to. So what does Jesus do? Jesus grabs an Old Testament prophecy from a highly respected and appreciated prophet, Isaiah, that says your eyes are blinded. So here it is. Walk with me, class. That, that, that Jesus is trying to convince them, this audience, he's trying to convince them that he is the light. And so the way he uh, helps them to see it is that he grabs Isaiah and he says, Isaiah, come talk to us for a minute. You remember when you prophesied about their eyes were blinded and their hearts were hardened. They could not see. They could not receive. And the only way that that was going to happen if, if their eyes were open. Yeah, the only way that's going to happen if their hearts were, 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 were open with understanding. And you said now that the only way that people would be healed if this happened for them. So Jesus says, I am the light. So, so one more time, y'all. If you can't see your way through, one reason would be that there's not enough light. The, the, I can't navigate. I can't work through because there's not enough light. So, so I'm stumbling through the house. I, I can't make heads or tails on where I'm going. I'm trying to navigate. I bump my foot against the sofa because there's not enough light. So here it is. In order for them to see the full picture, Jesus is trying to help them understand that Isaiah said that you would be blind and you wouldn't understand. So I'm here to give you the light to guide you and heal you. Are y'all seeing this? So, so here it is that, that Jesus says that I know you're refusing me. I know you're pushing away from me. I know you're not accepting me as Lord and Savior, but I, let, let me help you real quickly. I am the light. You remember when Isaiah sh shared this prophecy and it has been passed down through generation? You remember that? You know who Isaiah was talking about? He was talking about me. Isaiah was telling you that I am the light. And the only way you're going to be able to see, the only way you're going to be able to heal, be healed if you walk in the light and accept the light. But here's the problem. You can't see what you refuse. He can be the light. He can give light. He can have healing. He can have the access you need. But if you refuse it, you still ain't going to be able to see. So, so, so drop down with me. Hope that blessed you as much as it blessed me. Let's look at verse 42 and 43, John 12. Verse 42 and verse 43, the Bible says, nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They loved the praise of men more than the praise, the praise of God. Here's my second point I want to give you. And the whole reason why I asked Aiden to come in with us, you have to stand for something. You have to stand for something. My, my son has a beautiful spirit, a sweet spirit. Um, his spirit is such that he tries to please everybody, that, that he has this way about him, that if, if, you, uh, if you need his help, he's going to do his best to give it to you, that, that he will tell five people, I'll be there at one o'clock and it's his intention to make all five places at one o'clock. Now, obviously he can't do that. He can't be there, uh, but, but he wants to. And his heart is towards that. Uh, that, that he likes to please people. He likes to make people happy. Here's what's crazy though, is that I've just, I just put my son on blast, but he ain't the only one out there. There's a whole lot of people like that, that you like to please people that, that, that you, uh, that you want to make everybody happy, that, that you want to uh, to win the favor of people, that, that you want people to clap for you, you want people to sing your praises. 
but, but the text says is that they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And so what I try to help my son understand is that you have to make sure that whatever you do, whatever you stand for, has to be aligned with God. You got to put him first. I, I know people want you to go here. I, I know they want you to go there. I, I know they're pulling on you, but make sure that wherever you go, that whatever you do, that it aligns with God's plan for your life. That is in step with what God has in store for you. Because sometimes when you're trying to gain the praise of men, the enemy will use that in order to pull you in the wrong way. Use it to pull you in the wrong direction. And so you have to make sure that I care more about honoring God than I do pleasing men. If the synagogue rulers admitted they believed in Jesus, they would have been put out of the synagogue. If they admitted that they believed in Jesus, they would have been put out of the synagogue. So, they, so here it is, y'all. They believed in who Jesus was. They believed in what he did and his power, but they couldn't tell anybody or else they would lose their place and position. So they believed him. They knew he could heal the sick, raise the dead, that they knew the power resident within him, but they couldn't admit it because if they admitted it, they put out and they don't have place and position anymore. Here's my question for you. How often have you compromised your stand for God because of what others may see or what others may feel? Well, how often have you compromised that I have a stand for God because you didn't want them to see you in that light? You, you, didn't, you didn't want them to, to know that you love God like that. They, you didn't want them to know that you had a prayer life like that. You didn't want them to know that you are that faithful to God, that you show up on every Sunday. How often have you compromised your stand for God because of what others may say, what how others may feel? If you have guests come from out of town, do you stick to your worship schedule or do you catch us online that Sunday? Which one do you do? That that, that your, your family come in town for the weekend, they from North Carolina, they from Chicago, they're from wherever. But on this Sunday, you, you worship every Sunday. On this Sunday, I got to cook breakfast for everybody. You don't cook breakfast no Sunday. But but on this Sunday, I got to cook breakfast for everybody. And you, you forsake your worship schedule in order to please me. If people have issue with you praying, do you stop praying or do you stay consistent? That you pray before your meals, you pray before you, uh, when you wake up, you pray on your way to work. But if somebody in the car with you, you say, I ain't going to pray today because I may offend them. If you love God, if your love for God rather offends others, what do you do? If my love for God offends somebody else, what do I now do? The rulers were afraid of the consequences and confessing Jesus so they decided to keep it to themselves. I'm just asking you on this evening. We just It's just me and you in Bible study. I'm just asking, do you compromise your stand for God because of what others may think? The text says they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. See, the challenge, though, the challenge, y'all, the challenge with loving the praise of men, you have to ask yourself, what lengths will I go to to get the praise? That's the challenge. That if you love the praise of men, you got to ask yourself, what lengths will I go to in order to get the praise? Okay, can I make it make sense for you? If they clap for you as long as you smile, what about days you don't feel like smiling? Do you still need the claps? If they pat you on the back when you show up early and stay late, what happens on the days when you can't make it? If they give you a standing ovation when you sing a song, what happens when you have laryngitis? So how in the world are you going to keep up uh, uh, all this you got to do in order to get the claps, in order to get the ovations, in order to get the pat on the back? What are you willing to do? What lengths are you willing to do in order to get that if you really need it? Because the real question is, if you don't get the clap, you don't get the pat on the back. You don't get the stand ovation. Are you still okay? Do you care about the praise of men or is God enough? That's what you got to ask yourself because there will be times, let me make it very clear, 
there will be times that nobody's going to call your name. There will be times when nobody's going to sing your praise. Nobody's going to stand up for you. Nobody's going to clap for you. Nobody's going to pat you on the back. And if you're doing it for the praise of men, you're going to be disappointed. If you're doing it for the praise of men, it's going to always fall short. But if you are doing it for God, then God is faithful not to forget about you. God is faithful not to forget your work and labor of love. One of my favorite scriptures, the Hebrew writer reminds us that God is not unfaithful to forget your works and labor of love that you have done in his name. And so when I'm doing it for the right reason, it don't matter who clap. It doesn't matter who stand up. It doesn't matter who call my name. If my motivation is in fact for the praise of God, listen, I'm going to be all right if nobody say anything. But these, these religious rulers, the Bible says that they love the praise of men more than praise of God. The problem and the question and the challenge is that you may compromise your own standards in order to get praise if that's what motivates you. See, I, I, I want to be in line with God. I want to serve God. I want to honor God with my life. And I don't want to chase after praise in order to make sure that I get the praise of men. I would much rather just live my life and know that God is, is, is God is honored by, uh, by what I do. L let me look at verse 45 and verse 46, and I'm done on tonight. Verse 45 and 46, we're still in John chapter 12. The Bible says, and he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Here's the last point I want to give you. Stop walking in darkness. Stop walking in, in darkness. You cannot see Jesus without seeing the Father. Without seeing the Father. You also cannot see Jesus without seeing the assignment that he was sent for. You can't see Jesus without seeing the mission that he's on. Here's the mission. He's telling John chapter 12, I've come as light into the world. That's why I've come. I've come as light into the world. Here it is, y'all. We live in a fallen, a broken, and a dark world that needs more light. That's where we live. That is our circumstance. That is our situation. We live in a fallen world, a broken world, a dark world, and it needs more light. I know that you complain about how bad the world is. I know you complain about this generation uh, don't come to church. They don't serve God. They don't love God. You, you complain about it's just all going to hell in the handbasket. I get it. I know what you're saying. But here's what you got to know. Light shines brightest in dark places. Can, can somebody repeat that to me, please? That, that, that Can you put that in the chat? That light shines brightest in dark, dark places. That, that because the world is so dark, that the light ought to shine even brighter, that that that, that the, uh, the work that we do ought to speak louder because we live in a broken and fallen and dark world. So when we do things that bring light, it should shine, it should shine bright. And the, tr and the truth of it, it does. It does that, that people in our city, people around our city, people that join us online talk often about Carmack Boulevard in this light. They say that uh, I'm impressed with the church that gives shelter to the homeless during the holidays. That, that when other people are gathering with their families, nothing wrong with that. When other people are giving gifts among one another, that this church, Carmack Boulevard, gives shelter to the homeless, coats to the homeless, gifts to the homeless on Christmas Day, on Christmas Eve, and the day after Christmas. And people talk about that. People talk about how we provide free meals through our Feeding the Multitude ministry. They talk about how we give out backpacks in the community and bless people. They talk about how we put people, put up people in hotel rooms and help people with utilities and their rent that are having a tough time. And the reason why that shines bright, the reason why people talk about it and share it and communicate it's because most of the world is not looking out for others. They're looking out for themselves. That's the majority of the world is that you can ask anybody that, that they are concerned with themselves. They are concerned about what's important to them. Listen, I, I don't want to I don't want to confuse you. 
we got folks that are members of our church that, that have selfish attitudes sometimes. I mean, we're not immune from that, that, that I'm not going to tell you 100% of all the members of Carmack Boulevard uh, enjoy sharing and giving and all those kind of things that, that uh, everybody don't show up to serve, everybody doesn't show up to give, everybody doesn't. But, but what I am saying is that we lead an effort and give opportunity to people to involve to do all this stuff, but it surprises people, people talk about it, because it shines bright in a dark place where people don't expect that, but then it happens. People come to us looking for physical help, but what we consistently try to point them towards is spiritual, spirit, spirituality. We want them to stop walking in darkness. They may come to get their rent paid, but we're going to talk to them about Jesus. They may show up to get help because they're homeless, but we're going to pray over them and for them to help them stop walking in darkness. Because here's the thing. Most people's issues is not they don't get paid enough. People get paid. They just don't do the right things with it. It's not a lack of opportunities. I went by at least 10 places today that they asked them about uh, need some need some hires. We need some people because we need to fill these positions. It, is not, it has nothing to do with their skills and talents. Most people are walking in darkness. And as a result, the enemy's yoke is trying to destroy them. That, that, that's really the problem. The problem is not uh, the resources. The problem, not the opportunities, is that you have a yoke that the enemy has put on your neck and he's guiding you and he's trying to destroy you. But on Sunday... You, you, were you with us on Sunday? You, you were with us in worship on Sunday? If you were, you do remember that on Sunday, we talked about breaking the yoke of bondage. You remember that? We talked about breaking the yoke of bondage, that we can walk in freedom. Jesus says that I've come as the light. I've come as the light for all of us not to have to live in darkness any longer. So those who were in bondage, I'm coming to set you free. I, I, those that were were were, were, uh, were were strapped with this yoke that that drove them to make poor choices and bad decisions, I'm coming to set you free. That those who uh, who, who found themselves in situations that they never intended to be in, Jesus says, "I'm bringing the light in order for you not to walk in darkness." So my my encouragement this evening is simple: stop living in darkness and start walking in the light. That's the invitation of somebody, that, that you have to make the decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and start walking in the light. He is the light. He is the direction. He is the way that you should go. And so I'm encouraging you. I am pleading with you. I am asking you to say to yourself that darkness, I'm not living that any longer. I'm done with it. I'm putting in my past. I'm leaving it there. And I'm going to start, start walking the light. I am not going to please men. That is not my aim. I want to please God with my life. I am moving to a place to where I know God and I'm not going to be ashamed of him. I'm not going to be ashamed to call on his name. I'm not going to be uh, 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 skeptical about what I do in front of others. Listen, I am sold out for God and I don't care who knows it. I'm going to recognize that he's around me. He's in me. He's operating in my life, around me, working through me, and I will no longer refuse to see Jesus showing up in my life. He is the light. He is guiding us in the light. I don't want you to be blind. I don't want your heart to be hardened. I want it to be open. I want you to be healed. I want your life to be better. I want you to stand for God. I want you to live for God. I want you to serve God. I want you to walk, walk in the light. I pray that you're blessed on this evening. Thank you all for being with us on this evening. Again, share to somebody, let somebody know they want to uh, be a part of the Bible study, the beauty of Bible study. They can check this out anytime on this evening. They can check it out tomorrow. They can be blessed by it. And that's exactly what I want them to do. I want somebody, because of this word, for a, a yoke to be broken, uh, for them to walk in freedom, and most important, to walk in the light. The enemy does not have to have control over you for all of your life. You do not have to live for the applause and the praise of men. I want you to honor God with your life. 
honor God with everything, everything you do. Listen, uh, I want you on tomorrow to join us for midday Bible study. Those who are in the Columbia area, join us for midday Bible study at noon in the fellowship hall. And then at 7 p.m., I need for y'all to come, come hang out with me. We will not have the Wednesday kids classes, no Wednesday kids classes. I will be at the Northview Church of Christ on the Nashville Highway in Columbia uh, at a 7 p.m., the Northview Church of Christ. That's where I'll be on the Nashville Highway next to the Kroger there. Uh, that's where that church is situated. Y'all know I don't like to go nowhere by myself. And so please join me, be with me. Aiden's going to be with me. Isn't that a blessing, y'all, that he's going to be hanging out with me? Uh, he, he is my armor bearer that's been on vacation for a while. And so he's going to be right there with me and uh, hanging out with me tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. I'm thanking God for that. So if, if y'all don't come to see me, come to see Aiden. So that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. We'll be at the Northview Church of Christ. I'll be preaching a lesson. Actually, what's crazy, y'all, is that my lesson topic is in the book of John. It's, it's, it's talking about I'm the door of the sheep. And so uh, so it's the I am. So my, my topic is I am the door of the sheep. We talked about that weeks ago. And so I told him that's right up my alley. I've been teaching through John uh, over a year now. And so we're looking forward to that. So that is on tomorrow on Wednesday. Friday, the prayer call happens. You know, every single Friday we join at 8 a.m. in order to get on and pray for one another with one another. So we're looking forward to that Friday prayer call, 8 a.m. Don't come by yourself. Make sure you bring somebody, bring somebody with you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I want you all to be praying for uh, Sue Lindsay. Uh, pray for her Tennessee family and the loss of their family member. And so we'll be praying with you and for you, Sue Lindsay. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. Uh, you know that you are you are our our family as well. And so, uh, so we've been riding together for a long time. So if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Uh, but let's lift one another up in prayer. Also, uh, Vivian has to pray for her friend Rufus, who is uh, concerned about some test results. Call him by name. I've been calling him by name since she asked me. And so uh, if y'all would be praying for his health, for his well-being, and that God, uh, God continues just to uh, bless him in an amazing way. And so... Uh, I want you all to be praying uh, for them and with them and uh, and for God to get the glory out of their lives. I also want to tell you that um, I did not know this on Sunday. I like to, if somebody's birthday, a member of our church falls on a Sunday, I like to embarrass them, y'all. And so I did not know that Felicia Armstrong's birthday was on Sunday as well and Wanda Vestal. I, I call Wanda Vestal out. And, uh, and said happy birthday to her, but I did not call out Felicia Armstrong, and uh, and she let me do it. So uh, so I wrote you all if uh, if you know Felicia's number, if you follow follow her on Facebook, if you connected her anyway, make sure you let her know uh, happy birthday to her. Her birthday was on Sunday, but listen, we just thank God that God blessed her with another year of life. So happy birthday, Felicia! If you're on right now, uh, we uh, say happy birthday to you. Uh, Cynthia Webster, please pray for her for healing and for strength. We're praying for you, uh, Cynthia, and uh, lifting you up in prayer. Listen, we got some folks to pray for. You pray for us. We're praying for you. Pray as we uh, we continue to uh, to look forward to all that God's going to do. Listen, if uh, if all of August August has five Wednesdays in it, has five Wednesdays in it. If that's going to be way too long for you all. Uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, email us. Email us. Uh, that that's that's the way I really know that you uh, that you uh, I really know. Felicia said thank you. She is on. Happy birthday, Felicia. Um, and so email us at carmackchurch at gmail. If you are part of our online audience, you don't live in the city, so you're not gonna see me except for on Sunday. Uh, you need a best of. Email us at carmackchurch at gmail. And tell me, I need a best of, I need a best of, I need a best of. And so uh, that's going to take a little bit of work and there will be no conference call. <laughs> so, but, but I just, just want to let you know, uh, I am, uh, I have a shepherd's heart. That, that, that's where it is. My wife will tell you uh, that I will, uh, I'll change and shift everything. And sometimes to my own, uh, my own detriment uh, in order to make sure everybody else is okay. But that's what God has called me to, and I understand that. But if you really do need it, 
and, uh, and we need your best stuff. Let us know. If you're going to be okay and you can read your Bible yourself and just be ready in September, then that's cool. Uh, and so, but, but let us know, Carmack Church at Gmail and uh, gmail.com. If we get a lot of emails, then we'll know uh, to do something. If not, then we know you're going to be good and you'll join us back in September because I really don't want to lose momentum. I don't want to lose you. Uh, and so, uh, so if that, but we'll be there on Sunday. So make sure you join us on Sunday. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. I need that. Yes. Uh, and so let's pray together and uh, lift up God. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you bless us in amazing ways. Thank you for giving traveling grace to Aiden, dear God, that, uh, that through accidents and things on the way, that you allowed him to make it safely. And for that, we give you praise around. Watch over Alexis, dear God, that as she's been away from us, that you give her safe passage on this weekend. Allow uh, the plane ride to be safe, that all to be well, for her to enjoy these last few days and to stay safe. Dear God, we pray for Vivian's friend, Rufus, dear God. We call him by name. We know you know his name, dear God. We call him by name, uh, letting letting him know, letting Vivian know that we are concerned about him and we pray for his health. Dear God, we're praying for uh, Sue Lindsay, dear God. Thank you for her spirit and her heart. Continue just to give her good health. Continue to invigorate her and give her the passion that she needs in order to serve you faithfully. But God, we're lifting up those who have lost loved ones, her family in particular, dear God, that's lost loved ones in our area. God, anything that we can do in order to help and to serve, uh, let that door be op made open to us. Uh, dear God, we are praying for uh, Cynthia, dear God, on tonight, that you give her healing, that you give her strength. All the things she stand in need of, God, we know that you give it liberally to those who ask. We know that she's asking, dear God, to be a better servant for you, to be a stronger servant, to do and give more to you each and every day. And so, God, we ask you to bless her according to, to your will. God, we thank you for everyone on the sound of my voice. Dear God, those that have joined, those that have shared, those that have just peeped in, dear God, that you add a blessing to their life. Dear God, you know that what we're planning, you know what we're trying to achieve, you know what we have in mind. To bless the young people, to bless the members of our church, to bless the community. God, we can't do any of it without you. So we ask your blessing over it, that you give us what we need. Now, God, we thank you. We love you. Uh, let us rest well tonight to wake up ready to serve you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, have a good night. We thank God for you and uh, appreciate uh, your faithfulness uh, in Bible study.